Thank you very much, Lele. And um, to get him back to one of the concepts I mentioned at the very beginning, I would like to focus once again on the very definition of extractivism, which is basically something that from its very beginning has been a kind of a renewed science of the capitalist accumulation. So the point is that from this very beginning, from the same very beginning, this kind of appropriation of resources and so on hit basically on those um, so on those group of the society of popul popul oops, sorry of population uh, following the distinction of classes gender um, race species again and even today the cost of the climate crisis we can say that rely mainly on those population that lives on the global south basically and even in the north um, even in the north and the global north usually the places that suffer the most these kind of effects of the climate crisis, the crisis are the poorer areas wherein basically um, the population cannot leave the land they are living so they are forced to endure the situation and the devastation of their land and um, one of the major example of this kind of behave we have it here in Italy is the company that I'm talking about it's the NIE also called for the Italians ENI which is basically um, building biorefinery here in Italy, here in Venice at Porto Marghera, while keeping devastating the, the Nigeria with the delta of the river um, Niger. And what I'd like then to, to ask Elena that we've very common this, um, this group of researchers um, who has been studied a lot the, the behavior of this um, company, the ENI, is that I'd like to, to know and to, if I'd like to ask you to tell us how basically fighting against, climate, against the climate crisis and uh, for climate justice means, mm, um, means to fight also against one of the most important energy uh, company in the world. So I'd like also you to, to talk about what's going on there, not only from the environmental point of view, but also how the infrastructures of any are directly connected with the financial fluxes that are actually moved by the economic, the, the climate crisis. So thank you, Anna Clara, and thanks uh, everyone for being here and um, uh, No Grandi Navi and Climate for. Uh, Fridays for Future Venice for inviting us. Um, so uh, I think that uh, linking also with uh, what Emanuele was, was saying before, um, I think that it is, it is important when we talk about injustice also to understand uh, um, where injustice is coming from. So when we look at the extractivist society, so when we try to understand uh, um, the uh, relations of power that are uh, um, the main structure of the extractivist society, uh, we may see that uh, concentration of power is one of the key issues. So there is injustice because there is concentration of power. And the concentration of power, historically, uh, of course, is rooted in um, what was uh, colonialism globally. Uh, so if you think about uh, the oil majors, for instance, uh, their power is historically rooted in colonialism and in the appropriation of uh, uh, territories and resources that uh, Europe in general, like European countries in general, but also some specific actors within Europe did centuries ago. And that power relation was set and it was never changed through time. So, of course, there has been a lot of evolutions if you know international politics. Uh, but, for instance, if you look at ENI, but also if you look at Shell, they were in Nigeria before Nigeria was called Nigeria, you know. They were there before the independence of the country. And they came there with states uh, that uh, appropriated uh, the, the territory, but also uh, they deeply infiltrated the relations of power there. So uh, everybody today would say, you know, Nigeria is a corrupt country. 
that could be the beginning of a very, very long conversation if you really would like to understand why today people are saying that. And of course, you cannot avoid talking about oil if uh, you really want to go uh, to the root causes of uh, what is the injustice today in Nigeria as well. Um, so, um, as I was saying, the power structure. So, if we look at the Italian context, but I think that can be, um, I mean, uh, very similar in other places. If we look historically at Shell, so mostly the Netherlands as a place, but also BP, for instance, in the UK, and so the empire of uh, the British Empire of a time. Um, this, the oil majors are at, at the core of the system of relation that um, is about uh, uh, concentration of power, but also accumulation by dispossession of the rest of humanity. So you, we are in a context where um, the extractivism operates in such a way. Wealth is being concentrated and power at the same time. They are concentrated more and more uh, in the hands of uh, a very small group of people within countries, within territories, or globally, depending on the perspective that you, are, you want to take. Um, at, the, at the same time, you have uh, this mood of continuous accumulation and extraction uh, that continues to, to carry on, and dispossession. Um, so, this is our starting point, I think. And if we want to look at uh, climate justice, if we want to look at uh, fighting climate change uh, from a a, a climate justice perspective, I think we shouldn't avoid addressing that issue. So this has to do with, uh, you know, naming and shaming uh, some key actors. ENI oil majors uh, can be like uh, at the core of our naming and shaming, but also it, ab it is about to understanding. Uh, um, it is about understanding uh, uh, the broader set of relations uh, where these players are rooted, you know. Uh, what I mean is that uh, it's kind of uh, the approach today of people to oil and uh, to oil majors as well is a lot about, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to change our consumption. So people are, uh, you know, cautious about plastic, uh, plastics, they are cautious about uh, using bikes, avoiding cars, uh, understanding how oil is being used in society. But I think that the next step is also about understanding the specific role that oil is playing in the economic system in which we are living. So oil is at the core of the system. It is at the core of the financial system. It is at the core of how our society is organized. So everything, our life, uh, here in the north, but also in the south, uh, is basically organized around oil. So if we are looking for a change, uh, and if we are understanding also this issue about uh, power and concentration of power around oil, it means that we must look for a radical change. And uh, I want to touch upon um, another aspect. So. We were mentioning before the green economy and why everything is going, you know, is falling apart. So, I mean, back in 2012, uh, we as a collective, when we set up as a collective, our, our, our project is, was kind of born in 2012. And we were six people at the time. And uh, the, the first thing that we wrote was a critique to the green economy. And it was a, a book basically explaining how financial markets were taking advantage of nature, how they were penetrating nature, how they were redefining nature, calling it natural capital, uh, how they, they, are, they were uh, f developing a new set of uh, false solutions to climate change, uh, which were rooted in the concept of, of setting. Uh, so, these days, uh, every, everything is much more clear to all of us, but the seeds uh, of uh, what we are seeing today, they were very clear also 10 years ago. And this is why we decided that we needed to put it on paper. And uh, uh, I think uh, 
incredibly, but this can still be a resource uh, today. So why I'm saying that? I'm saying that because uh, if, if we look at how climate change is being discussed uh, these days, uh, mainstream discussion around climate change, you see that the oil majors are within the discussion. I mean, they feel that they are part of the solution. They recognize themselves. Uh, I'm, I'm amazing, but you, would, you can look, uh, you can search on, on, on the web for CEOs of BP, of Shell, of ENI, talking about climate change and how they feel they have a role in addressing climate change. So this is like bizarre uh, as a minimum, but it's also, it's also telling us how the system is already reinventing itself uh, and how they are portraying themselves as, uh, you know, uh, okay, we understand uh, what we did, uh, uh, we understand it's very wrong, uh, we acknowledge that uh, uh, we, had, uh, we have our share of responsibility, but we are here to put uh, all our knowledge uh, at the service of the planet. And we are here with you to build the solutions of tomorrow. And this is, for me, it's crazy on one side. On the other side, is also very logic. If we look at how renewable energies are expanding, if we look at how they are being proposed, if we are looking at Shell being one actor, for instance, in uh, you know, developing green technologies, if we look at ENI uh, declaring that uh, they, will, they will start to reduce their impact on the planet and they will do it by you know, planting more trees planting more trees. I mean, or, you know, uh, entering the business of bio refineries, biofuels, uh, uh, they talk about green gas, uh, they, they are basically redefining what we know with the purpose of not changing anything and continuing with business as usual. So we have to be very careful in uh, like being able to capture these very small changes in the narrative. We have to be aware that uh, if we look at oil majors from a perspective of power, they will never change. I mean, they can, they can change their business from, you know, fully oil and gas into fully renewables, but for sure the model of renewables that they will propose will be as extractive as the oil and gas one. So they are extractivists today, they will be extractivists tomorrow with a different face, you know? And I think this is also quite important because it's taking us to um, another, uh, another level, which is uh, what is the type of society that, that we foresee? So I foresee a society where you know, myself and the farmers who live in the Niger Delta are on the same side. So that has a lot of implications because, uh, of course, uh, the farmers in the Delta, as anyone who's living, you know, on the specific place where not only uh, the extraction of resources is much uh, harder, like in terms of they are suffering the environmental damage, they are also suffering climate change much more than anybody else, but they are also suffering the violence, the abuses, the corruption that are within the system. The same system that I was de describing before. So everything there is, is much more um, difficult and uh, they are on the front line and we are less, much less. So how do I build uh, um, alliances uh, that are meaningful here? How can I act here in a way that is meaningful to them? How can I address uh, uh, injustice locally and globally in a way that is supportive of the struggles of, um, of these people that may be living, living thousands of kilometers away, but still being at the front line? And I think that these are some of the questions that I want to just throw out there for the discussion afterwards. Thank you.